Hey guys, it's Katie, and I'm here today to do the Art of Books tag. I was tagged several months ago by Shelby from Read and Find Out, and I actually also talked to Kara down in the comments of her video, and she kind of suggested that I do it too. So I'm saying I was technically tagged by both. And before I get started, I just figured it would be important for me to just tell you guys but I'm making a conscious effort this year to not mention the same like 10 books in every tag that I do. So one of the big things that I'm doing is I'm not gonna mention ROTE in every single tag. Um, I was looking at these questions and I mean literally answer every single question with something from those books. So I'm just putting that disclaimer out there. They answer all of the questions of life in my eyes and so um just know that every answer i struggled with like my first thought was to mention that so i'm just not gonna do that so you might see some new things or some surprises but you might see a few things that i've talked about as well um so without further ado now let's just jump on into the questions number one colored pencil layering in colored pencils, layering tones gradually build up a drawing using several colors. What book had several complex layers to the plot? There were a couple of answers I could have used for this question, but I went with, you know, the one that had the most complex plot, and I picked The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien. I'm not going to say too much because I've gone into it in several other videos on my channel, but basically, it is the history and the creation of Tolkien's entire Middle-earth world. From the time that the world was created to the races being created through all of the different relationships that were with each race, you know, between each race, like dwarves and elves and how their relationships and their views of each other morphed over time to all these different kinds of wars that were going on and ultimately just kind of what led up to kind of where the hobbit and the lord of the rings take place so i mean i it's hard to explain that book in a lot of ways but just the plot of the overarching book is incredibly complex because of the world building that goes on and because of the characters interactions with each other it just all ties in into one epic tale and you really can't separate world building plot and characters from one another because of how it's written so yeah that one is definitely one of the most complex books i have ever read Two, charcoal blending Blending is done to create smooth transitions between darker and lighter areas of a drawing. What is a book where the light and dark blend to each side? So for this question, I also thought of a bunch of different books, but it also depends on how you interpret light and dark blending, because I can see it interpreted in several ways. But the, the, the book, and actually the series that I'm picking to go with, this question is the Animorph series by Kay Applegate. You guys have probably heard me talk about this throughout my channel from time to time vaguely and then I did my final review a couple of months ago. But the reason I'm picking this is because, and I'm going to be as vague as possible so it's not to really spoil you on anything, but the events and the aftermath of the events of what goes on in the book it's really interesting because there was something that I thought about at more towards the end of the series and it was basically that you know there were clearly a good side and a bad side but if you really step back and think about it depending on whose perspective you're looking at actions of both sides had serious repercussions and they were hmm they were both fighting for a good cause but they both had serious repercussions and did similar things and so from that point it just kind of blends and you don't you don't necessarily know 
who is good and who is bad, if that makes sense just depending on the perspective you're getting. We had the Yerks who were the quote bad guys and then we had the Animorphs who were the quote good guys but they both did such terrible awful things and just depending on whose side you're looking at it could be seen differently and so at that point it just really blends and you're just everyone is kind of morally gray and you don't know who's who's good and who's bad and yeah it's just it's a lot more complicated than first meets the eye. I hope that made sense. Number three, pen and ink, cross-hatching. Parallel lines drawn at different angles so that the quantity, thickness, and spacing of the lines will create the illusion of volume. What is your favorite book series with the most volumes? I struggled with this one because I read a lot of really large book series. But ultimately, I went with The Magic Treehouse by Mary Pope Osborne. You guys have heard me talk about this one at length throughout many of my videos on here. Um, and you've kind of heard what that series means to me. But the reason I'm picking this one is because it has a really large volume of volumes. <laughs> uh, it has, I think, 28 overall in the first series and then it has all these like spin-off series which I haven't really read but um yeah it's got quite a large a large collection of books in the series so I figured that I would pick that one number four marker permanent markers are known for their permanent lines what is a book that is permanently drawn in your mind for this one, I also had a lot I could have picked, up, picked from, but I ultimately went with The Odyssey by Homer. The reason I'm picking The Odyssey is because the imagery and the plot and the characters and all of the creatures that are scattered throughout that epic poem are all just so vivid in my mind and so permanently there. I mean, is this, you guys have heard me talk about it. That book had such a big impact on me for multiple different reasons, but half the reason I can't forget it is because of how vivid a lot of the overarching plot and characters and things that happen in the book really are. So that's one that is permanently drawn in my mind. Number five, acrylic paint, vibrant. Acrylic paint is known for its vibrant colors. What is a book with a vibrant cover or a character? And for this, I picked The Star of Kazan by Ava Ibbotson. The edition that I have, which I don't, you know, it's, it's in a box because, you know, my life. The edition that I have, which I'll put up on the screen, has an incredibly vibrant color. I just remember that whenever I would walk amongst my bookshelf that one would always stand out to me because of the bright gold cover and that had all those jewels on it with the stark black background and honestly it was just it's an incredibly stunning cover and it would always draw me in but then also just the setting and certain characters are also quite vibrant so in certain in certain ways and so it just ended up being the perfect book for both of the reasons. Number six, watercolor, wash. Wash is a watercolor technique resulting in a semi-transparent layers of color. What book had a transparent plot? So disclaimer, most books I read have a transparent plot in many, many ways. I'm just, I've just gotten so good at guessing plots. Like I'll sit there and I'll just figure out the plot of a book in the span of five minutes unless it's just a little bit more complex or unless I just don't care to figure out. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. The occasional book that does not, that, that does surprise me and doesn't really make me scream inside with me knowing what's coming. But for the sake of the question, I actually ended up picking the Percy Jackson series by Rick Riordan. Or just any of his books really to be honest um, knowing the myths like I do and just kind of 
figuring out the formula that he's using to write his novels in and just I don't know the way he's written the books it's just made it incredibly easy for me to generally figure out what's going to happen um at least this far you know I'm only on getting ready to start book three of the first series of Percy Jackson and the Olympians soon but so far it's just been a pretty predictable story and plot line it doesn't make it any less enjoyable for me because I care more about the characters and the world building than I do about the plot um, and I think it's because of my ability to just figure everything out before it happens but um, yeah that those books are definitely one series out of many that had a predictable plot. Number seven, oil paint. Texture. Oil paints are thick and can keep their shape to help build the illusion of an object with texture. Name a character or creature that you remember vividly because of how well they were described. And I'm picking another classic for this one and going with the Divine Comedy, but in particular Inferno by Dante Alighieri. And the, I'm picking two characters in particular that honestly were so well described that I'll never forget them. I mean, honestly, all of Inferno is solidified in my mind. It's, it's stunning and gorgeous and just so well described overall. But the two characters I'm picking, or creatures I should say, that I'm picking from that portion in general are Cerberus, so the three-headed dog that guards the gate to hell, and also Satan down in the ninth circle of hell with him eating the three tra treasonous traitors <laughs> of Brutus, Cassius, and Pontius Pilate. Cause he's got what is it he's got one uh he's got Brutus in one hand Cassius in the other and Pontius Pilate in his mouth and it's just just the whole the way that that the ninth circle of hell was described but also Satan as an overall creature that he's you know this icy creature rather than this fire creature that everyone automatically assumes it's just so well done the imagery and the word usage is just stunning and so i will never forget really just inferno in general but those two creatures in general number eight digital paintings new age media new age style of art media what is your favorite new release book so if you guys don't know this already, I don't read many new releases because I have such a backlog of other books that it's ridiculous. So I tend not to get new releases. But this year, 2019, I did manage to read a new release because, hi, I needed to get my hands on this book immediately. And that is The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. And that's book three of her Winter Night trilogy that, and it's just, it was so good. It's so good. Hmm. It's just, it's stunning and phenomenal and I'm just so glad that I decided to read it when I did because I was not going to be able to wait to get to it because I just, I was dying inside and I've become garbage for that trilogy. So, um, yeah, I'm really glad that I picked that one up. And that is probably going to be the only new release that I get to this year. Because it's just not going to happen with anything else. As I said, I have too many other things to get through that I already have. Or just other things I want to read. <laughs> Number nine, canvas. Blank canvas. Nothing better than a blank canvas to start drawing out your ideas. What book had the best original ideas? And for this, I'm picking The Sea of Trolls by Nancy Farmer. This is a trilogy that is Norse-based, and I will continue to recommend it to you, all of you guys, for the rest of time, because not enough people talk about it, not enough people know about it, and it deserves more credit than it gets. 
because not only is it original because in that in the fact that I don't know really any other Norse works, Norse fantasy works besides Rick Riordan's Norse series that's in the works right now. I think he's got three of them out, four of them out. I don't I don't know anymore. But other than that, I don't know any really any Norse based fantasy that is this well written because you just don't hear it talked about but not only is it pretty historically accurate but it's got language like clearly Nancy Farmer did her research when writing the series because she's got the mythology down she's got the historical events that surround it down and she's included language from that region that actually makes sense and she has a glossary in the back which I highly appreciate it's just so well done and so phenomenal and honestly as I said super original because I've just never seen something like that done before and I would I just as I said I can't I can't recommend it enough it's stunning number 10 paper scrap paper Sometimes you just have to scrap a drawing and start anew. What book should have been scrap paper and been reworked? Now, there are a lot of books that I can think of for this, but I'm going to pick a trilogy that I went at the end of last year, and that is the Grisha Trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. If you haven't seen my review discussion of this trilogy, I'd highly recommend going to watch it, especially if you've read the books. I mean, even if you haven't and you don't plan to, I'd go watch it because you're just not, yeah, it's fine. There's a lot of spoilers in there, but it's worth it to hear my points and my thoughts because it's not something that a lot of people talk about. But I had a lot of, a lot of issues with that trilogy. It was poorly researched, poorly written. The characters were one-dimensional. The writing was mediocre, and just the plot was so beyond predictable, like even more predictable than the Percy Jackson series, which, you know, I talked about earlier in this video, but I wanted to save the Grisha trilogy for this question in particular, because I'm not going, I'm, that's another thing I'm working on is not reusing the same books for multiple questions. Yeah, we're just not doing that. But as I said, I had a, a, just a ton of issues with this trilogy. I mentioned some of them a little bit, you know, five seconds ago. But I also just, it was not well researched. It was not well done. You know, she thought she was being creative with her world building and with things that she was doing. And I can just tell you right now, she was not, she wasn't. I mean, she claims that Ravka is not Russia, but it clearly is based on Russia. I mean, she literally took the Russian language and just kind of changed a few letters here and there to make it her own. And let me just tell you, no, you can't do that. And I just took so many different like traditions from and folk t folklore from Russian culture and just kind of like bastardized it and kind of did her own thing with it. And it made me mad. Okay, so... I just had so many severe issues with this book that honestly you could throw it into a fire and it would you know catch on fire and it would be fine and I'd still be mad about it um, yeah it just I lost so many brain cells reading that trilogy and yeah I'll be salty about it forever so I mean yeah definitely scrap paper that needs to be reworked so that's my salty tea and on that note, <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got for you guys today. I'm probably going to tag a few people down below who I think might be interested in doing this tag if they haven't done it already. But um, other than that, you guys know the drill at this point. And I have both of my social media links down below. I have a Twitter and a Goodreads. And if you guys want to come find me over there so we can chat some more. Other than that, I'll come back with another video for you guys again soon. And I'll catch you later. 
Bye.